it's unfortunate to say it, but UCLA flopped against LSU in the Sweet 16. You are locked on UCLA, your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's just say it how it is. UCLA flopped there. They absolutely had this game winnable. They had this game, I'm not going to say one, because LSU came back and went on a big run the last two and a half minutes, but that certainly should not have been how it ended. Welcome, everybody. I'm Zach Anderson, the Oxfam of the Locked On UCLA podcast. We're reacting to another Sweet 16 loss for the Bruins against LSU as they lost 78-69. I thought UCLA might win this one 79-70. I thought the Bruins did everything. They could to win this game a little more depth. They had better shooting. They had a better big. And yet they found themselves on the losing end against the defending champs. And it's frustrating. It's frustrating. Don't get don't get caught up in the angel race taunting. Don't don't get don't do that. Don't get oh class is cool. That's been their MO the whole year. Don't do this. Of course, it made me I, I don't care about that right now. It's clearly this is clearly on UCLA, and I don't want to go individually and hammer because they played so well this year, had such an opportunity this year with Osborne coming back, even Cameron Brown who came back this extra year to play and get the Bruins big minutes. They fought so hard in this game to come back down, what, 9, 10 points, down 7 at halftime, big third quarter, had the lead the majority of the fourth, and just collapsed late. Collapsed. They had a chance to go up two possessions, could never do so. Completely stupid turnovers. I, 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 I'm beside myself. Dumb 19 turnovers. And it was clear. LSU does this. Teams just come out and they turn the ball over against LSU. But it was foolish turnovers for the Bruins. Absolute foolish turnovers in a game where UCLA could have and should have had it. I think so. Where they just clearly, in one of my keys, I said they needed to hit their threes. Couldn't do so. And they kept going to it. They refused to get the ball to Lauren Betts. And when they tried to, they would do it in foolish ways. I've never seen a team struggle so much on post-entry passes as UCLA did today. And I know LSU is big, long, and mean. Emphasis on mean. Emphasis on they get in your passing lanes and harass the ball handler. But it wasn't that much for UCLA to throw it away like they did so many times. Like poor passes on inbounds plays in the first quarter when they had the lead. Poor passes when they're out in the break. And this couldn't have, wouldn't have been a, a game in which they found themselves trailing by so much. It, it's just so frustrating. Yeah, you're going to go say, oh, go look at other outlets. Oh, Angel, who cares? Who cares she was trash talking? Because they blew it. They absolutely blew it. Now I'm proud of their effort, proud of this season. Corey close recruits well because she got a lot of talent coming in. Just because Osborne is leaving and Cameron Brown, there are players who are still missing. It's unfortunate that Bessoir in the early part of the season missed. She would have been huge in this game. Another potential three-point shooter, another big, who could have been on the other side when UCLA could not guard Morrow, Right? when the Bruins are getting taken to school because of the size mismatch and the defensive mismatch. It wasn't an Angel Reese show. It wasn't. Yeah, she rebounded the ball, a couple steals, block shot. No, it wasn't that. It was the Flage Johnson show. She was impressive. It was great to see how London Jones caught fire at the end, got the Bruins some fire. Chris Osborne hitting some clutch shots, and then they just found themselves in the wrong end. Hawkes kept the Bruins in this game in the first half. If she doesn't make so many plays, the Bruins get blown out for playing so bad, but she kept him in the game, made some huge shots, UCLA up late, and then it's the turnovers and all the free throw shooting, 12 of 18. Let's go back to some keys for the game, why don't we? I thought this game might be 79-70 UCLA. I'll take that L on my forehead. It's fine. Who cares, right? But let's go back to keys for this game, all right? Keys for this game. How is UCLA going to win this game? Well, hit your threes. UCLA did not, and when it was clear they weren't, they weren't feeding it to the post or they were turning it over, and what sparked the run? If you're looking on YouTube, you can see the keys to the game. If you're listening, my first key, if you missed the last Locked on UCLA episode, was hit your threes. 
and the Bruins did not. And they took so many threes. I believe the halftime analysis said they normally shoot 21 a game, and they shot like 25 in the first half. But when they got in a run, UCLA hits the three ball. They have that in their repertoire. They got that. They can hit threes. They hit seven. It just took them so many shots to do so. Nearly half their shots came from downtown. And then they're down six, and they're refusing to shoot threes. It was mind-boggling, frustrating. And then when London Jones caught fire, it only seemed like she took two threes the rest of the game. I would like to get her a touch. And when UCLA's up one late on the offensive possession, they took Jones out. And I'm like, what are you doing? It was just, oh my goodness, frustrating to say the least that this is how this season ends. But how are all the UCLA losses? They were frustrating games that probably could have been won unless Betts was out. And it was clear that with Betts in the fold, UCLA is an absolute force to be reckoned with. This team's going to be back. They will be. And a lot of teams are maybe going to get worse. I know LSU, they could have Angel Reese back. They've already got another transfer committed who's a top double-double machine as well to replace Reese as he's left. Becker's is going back for UConn and yada, yada, yada. Clark's already gone. But this was a team that could have broken through and gotten to the Elite Eight, gotten to the Final Four. They were talented enough. That's why it's so frustrating that the Bruins did so. They all rebounded one of the best rebounding teams. They competed with one of these teams in the country, in LSU, and the Bruins couldn't do so. It was just unfortunate to see a game where Osborne's last game didn't result in a lot of points. You saw Dugalit struggle there, a little in-between floater, and the Bruins just couldn't score after that. They just got ice cold in this game where they shot 35%, the second key to the game. Let's talk about it. Stay out of foul trouble. In the beginning, it was nice to see Betts out of foul trouble. That was crucial until the middle part of the fourth quarter. But it was Osborne and Kiki getting into foul trouble, sending LSU to the line, which is what they do. But some of them were just dumb fouls. It was a foul-filled affair, which was very annoying for both sides. But UCLA, you got saw Kiki Rice. Elbow extended fouls out. It's like, oh, boy. Or a frustration foul. You miss a shot. Then you foul a person 90 billion feet away from the hoop, leading to free throws on the other side and not be down one, but be down three. On a team that LSU wasn't really shooting that well. Yes, they shot 45%, but they weren't always getting the best of looks. It was frustration and experience that got the better of the Bruins in this game. And not every LSU player on that team has played in the national championship or in those stages with LSU, but they played like it. So staying out of foul trouble, it was Osborne who had three. That was big early. London Jones eventually had four. That wasn't a really big factor. It was Kiki Rice fouling out, playing a lot of minutes though. And then Betts with her fourth foul in the middle of the fourth quarter, which took her out for a stretch when UCLA had that lead. They're battling. They're holding on. When Angel Reese had to sit out for a long portion from the third to the fourth quarter with four fouls or the beginning of the fourth, that was where UCLA should have pulled away. When that did not happen, that's when LSU won the game. That is when they won the game. When they could not pull away and the Bruins had to take out bets and the Bruins couldn't attack Reese. Well, the Bruins were in the bonus in the first quarter with five minutes to go, basically. They didn't get any free throws. It's not the ref's fault. They just didn't attack. And maybe there's a missed call there. Who knows? But they just didn't attack. And get those calls, earn those whistles to shoot more free throws. And they just gave LSU so many free throws, 31. And I know there's quite a few shot there at the end. Disregard the injuries trash talk because it it doesn't matter at this point. The way they played, UCLA played to lose instead of playing to win. And LSU played like, we've been here before. UCLA lost this game more than LSU won this game. That is what is so frustrating in my, my perspective. Players can go cold shooting, but just turnovers, sloppy frustration fouls, and one hopes that these players can take this motivation, this knowledge, and apply it to next year's squad. When these sophomores, that superior 2022 class, is then a junior, they're coming to both classmen, then they got another good influx of freshman talent coming in so they can make a Final Four run next year because they absolutely should. And they're going to be competing in the Big Ten. The Pac-12 is disbanded. You're not going to have as tough a conference play as they did. And yet after all of that, it came down to just a frustrating finish. And yes, it was nice to see. I was talking to London Jones, who was important. 
She had some big threes, keyed the game down the stretch, key in the third quarter to leading that charge, hit like three third quarter threes. But it wasn't enough because the Bruins already missed 25, basically. It was frustrating, absolutely frustrating. This team is not a sweet 16 team. They're in the lead eight, final four good. Oh, man. This is a team in a season that's going to hop. Maybe they weren't going to win a national championship. I, I would still believe they could and should have competed for more. But, man, Sweet 16 good is just, man, I don't know. That was just absolutely frustrating. To watch it, see them make of the run, and then give up 34th quarter points. <sighs> Man, oh man, that was brutal. Absolutely brutal. We're proud. I'm still proud of their effort, but frustrated that that's how it finished. Don't go. Don't go on social media and be like, "Angel, no, 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 don't, don't do that." Even if you read the Washington, no, don't. This is squarely on UCLA. Does not matter what Angel Reese says or Johnson or whoever's talking trash. This is all in the Bruins because as hyped as this were, as big of the tournament is, they had all the opportunity this season to get to that next step, get to the lead eight. So what if Colorado or Iowa had put up 50 points, right? Or Caitlin Clark, right? Iowa, Colorado, whoever was playing the next round. Frustrating. And wow, that was just a frustrating performance. <sighs> yeah, it was one of those days. You can say goodbye to busted brackets, maybe not a busted heart, but you can bet on every game of the tourney with FanDuel. Whether you're betting on a big upset or the one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet wins. First $5 bet. $200 to use on point spreads, money lines, or even pick who's going to win it all. You still got time. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut out the nets. That's again, FanDuel.com slash locked on. Well, what's next? You know, I'm frustrating. Frustrating that UCLA is not playing on Monday. Frustrating that they're not playing the next week. It's just frustrating how it ended. Man, uh, that's going to be an emotional press conference. It's going to be frustrating. That, that, that's the, the flop in the... Man, I, I could go on for a long time. I'll get myself in a lot of trouble. Probably some mean words. I've been yelled at before for criticizing a terrible team in college basketball. They couldn't handle criticism. This team can absolutely do so. But this moment, the emotions are way more at a level where I, I probably should shut up and end the podcast, which is what we're going to do. And instead, we're going to a clap and be proud of this season. 27 and 7, I believe, for the Bruins. Sweet 16. And they're building on the future. A lot of these talented players are coming back. Maybe some players who are key contributors can come back, like a Duga Leach. If Bessoir wants to come back one more time, depending on her injury status, if Close wants her to come back, maybe she goes finds a super steal in the portal. I don't know. We'll talk about all that locked on UCLA. We'll talk more McCronin portal finds, and we'll talk some spring football practice with Deshaun Foster as well for UCLA football. Meantime, hands up, Bruins fans disappointing as it was it was still ucla and we love them all right and one two three four five six seven eight you see la ucla fight 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 this has been locked on ucla zach signing off go bruins